the Lord be with you. Uh, the Lord be with you. Uh, I thank God for this uh, new opportunity uh, where uh, I'll be able to come uh, uh, via Facebook Live uh, to continue uh, to encourage you and uh, uh, to talk a little bit uh, about uh, what we are doing, uh, our New Testament in uh, 90 days. Again, the Lord be with you. So, uh, we are uh, excited about uh, uh, finishing the book of Matthew. Uh, yesterday, uh, we read uh, chapter 28 of uh, uh, the book of uh, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. And already this morning, I know some of you have already started or you are about to do your reading uh, in the book of Mark. Uh, so, if you allow me, I want to do a little bit of... Uh, a kind of a small review on the book of uh, the Gospel of Matthew and talk a little bit about the New Testament as we are looking forward uh, next Wednesday. I will uh, uh, emphasize uh, a little bit on uh, the book of Mark. Uh, you'll notice the Gospel of Mark is the shortest. Uh, it's not like uh, the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, the Gospel of Matthew is very interesting. Already I'm trying to, I'll give you a little bit of uh, insight uh, the audience for the Gospel of Matthew, uh, it was uh, the Jewish community. Uh, Matthew uh, is writing uh, to the Jewish community. And then you see uh, Mark, you will notice, is going to be writing uh, to the Gentile. The community uh, 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 are different because the style you will notice in the Gospel of Mark Mark is going to give a lot of clarification as he's talking about the Jewish uh, uh, customs. He's going to give more uh, detail and more explanation. That tells us that the audience was not familiar with the custom uh, 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 and, and, and the rituals in terms of uh, their religious practices. But then you will notice that in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew did not have those long explanations in terms of explaining the Jewish uh, ritual. He just uh, speaks. So based on that, as you will notice, uh, the scholars have uh, uh, not noticed that uh, the writer of uh, the Gospel of Matthew was a Jewish uh, uh, person who was writing to a, Jews, a Jew audience. Okay, So uh, let's start uh, with a word of prayer. Dear God, I give you praise and I thank you uh, for the privilege you have given us today to be able to study your word. Uh, give us wisdom and understanding. Holy Spirit, help us as we are going through scripture. Uh, give us an understanding and clarity. Continue to speak to us. Dear God, we pause for a while. Uh, we want to give you praise because we know even in the midst of our struggle, in the midst of our challenges, God, you promise you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. Assure us of your presence and of your support, especially to those of our brothers and sisters who are going through a difficult time. Those who are not feeling well, assure them of your support and of your presence. For you promise you'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us. May your peace that is beyond all human understanding abide with us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, my brothers and my sisters, like I said, uh, we are doing a study of the New Testament in 90 days. All right, NT90, uh, New Testament in 90 days. Already I want to give you some uh, uh, emphasis. Notice that uh, the New Testament is a collection of 27 books uh, uh, and letters uh, written in Greek. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. But the New Testament was written in Greek. So I want you to be also aware of that difference. So in terms of arrangement, we have four components. Four components. One is uh, uh, known as uh, the first part of uh, the New Testament, the 27 uh, books uh, uh, and letters uh, collection. Uh, the first part uh, is the Gospel and uh, the Acts, the book of Acts. So uh, the first part, people always put uh, this arrangement. One is the Gospels and the Book of Acts. The second one is the letters of Paul, the letters of Paul. And the third one is going to be the other letters written by other people. 
and then you have the last part which is number four the book of revelation which is quite a very different book because it is a collection of visions and prophecies now when it comes to the gospels they put the gospels and the book of acts together uh, because the book of acts also speaks about the spread of the gospel the good news as we talk about the gospel the new testament is about the good news the good news of our lord jesus christ and this is contained in the uh, gospel of matthew mark luke and uh, john all right the term gospel uh, means uh, good news all right uh, in these uh, four gospel uh, the gospels tells us about the good news about jesus christ okay it is about jesus christ the four gospels uh tells us about jesus christ and the book of act is connected to the gospels to be in part one of the new testament study because it speaks about the spreading of the uh, 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 news about jesus christ after jesus christ died and rose from the dead so you will see in part one the gospels are connected to the book of act so among the gospels we have finished reading the first book uh, the first gospel which is Matthew now Matthew what, what was going on when Matthew is writing this like I said the first audience uh, 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 he, he was addressing it to the Jewish people you will see uh, the, the the challenge between uh, two community here you have the Jewish people uh, the believers uh, of uh, Judaism uh, the people who celebrate the Torah, uh, they celebrate the uh, covenant that they have with God. And then here comes another movement, a new movement uh, known as uh, 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 Christianity. Uh, Jesus Christ is preaching to the Jewish people and they became Christians. So Jesus is introducing a new covenant and uh, uh, helping this new community of uh, Jewish Christians that, hey, uh, we are the new covenant with God. We are the new Israel. We, the, the new community of faith, uh, the new uh, community of faith, Matthew referred to it as the church. In fact, for your own information, it is only in the gospel of Matthew where the word church, church, church is being found. Two times you find the word church in the gospel of Matthew. And you don't see that elsewhere uh the church uh, on one occasion jesus referred to the church as uh, to peter when he asked peter uh whom do people say that that i am and uh, uh the disciples and peter were giving different answers until peter said to jesus christ you are the messiah the son of the living god and jesus said to him uh flesh and blood did not reveal that to you you are peter and uh, you, uh, you are uh, Peter, and, 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 and I will build my church. You are uh, uh, the stone, you know. I will build uh, my church upon this uh, rock, and, and the gate of hell shall not prevail. We see the word church over there. Uh, two times uh, we see the word church in the gospel of Matthew. You don't see the word church in other gospel. So for Matthew, the church is the new Israel. The church is the new Israel. It is composed of the Jewish people and the Gentiles who have received the message, the good news of Jesus Christ. In fact, now it makes sense when you see Matthew reporting uh, the two feeding, like I told you last Wednesday, in terms of uh, the first feeding of the 5,000 that took place in Bethsaida on the Jewish land, and the other a feeding of the 4,000 that took place on the Gentile land among the Greek. So, so, so you see the significance of Matthew emphasizing this new reality of the kingdom of God, the new Israel. We all know in the Old Testament about Israel being the chosen people of God. Now in the New Testament, God is uh, re reshaping uh, uh, the new covenant with the nation. And, and, and that covenant is being done through the church because the church, in fact, is even being referred as the bride of Jesus Christ. You will see the Apostle Paul talking about referring to the church as the bride of Jesus Christ. So the church is the new Israel. 
The new covenant, the new testament is built upon the church. And the church is built, uh, uh, was built through, through the blood of Jesus Christ. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ constitute the birth of the church. And, and, and Jesus gave birth uh, to, to, to the church through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why you see the book of Acts. That's where you see the birthday of the church. So the emphasis is the church is the new uh, Israel. It is composed with Jewish and Gentile who believe. So you have this new community known as the church, composed with uh, the non-Jewish people, the Gentile, and the Jewish people who have converted. Both they are claiming the heritage of the Old Testament, and you have on the other end the Jewish community, and uh, the leaders of uh, the Jewish community known as the Pharisees and and and. Uh, and the Sadducees, these religious leaders, you will see throughout the book of Matthew that there is a conflict, there is a fight uh, in terms of leadership. Uh, 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 the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they are challenging Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is also challenging them in terms of uh, 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 presenting this new, new reality of the kingdom of God. And many Pharisees and Sadducees, they are not accepting the gospel. They are rejecting the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are resisting Jesus Christ. In fact, they even accuse Jesus Christ of being demon-possessed. And uh, 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 one time they, 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 they said Jesus uh, was blaspheming when he said he referred to himself as the son of God. In fact, that will be the whole charge. And, 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 and then when uh, he will be brought to the cross, he was killed because, you know, according to them, he really uh, 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 he committed the sin of blasphemy. He referred to himself as, as, as the son of God. In fact, you'll see the language in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew is using the language of uh, the kingdom of heaven instead of using the kingdom of God, because in the Jewish tradition, you couldn't just say the name Yahweh uh, like, uh, lightly like that. You know, the name Yahweh was so holy that uh, uh, the Jewish people had reverence of the name of God. You know, they were not using the name of God the way we use lightly the name of God. You know, you couldn't just say God, you know. He will talk about the kingdom of heaven instead of talking about uh, the kingdom of God. Look another way of referring reverence toward the name of God. He will not even say the son of God. He will say the son of man uh, uh, when uh, uh, he's referring to Jesus Christ. So big emphasis there, the church, we see the word church two times, only two times in the gospel of Matthew. And the church here is being introduced to us as the new Israel. We have a new covenant with God. The covenant is built on the blood of Jesus Christ. And in this covenant, God is choosing uh, to start a new covenant with the Gentile and the Jewish people all together under the new family of God. So the emphasis here is uh, in the book of, uh, in the gospel of uh, Matthew, you will see there is a theme that comes over and over uh, known as righteousness. The word righteousness also is used seven times in the gospel of Matthew. And you are not going to see that in other gospel. The word righteousness in terms of how uh, they translate the word uh, righteousness from a Greek perspective. They uh, uh, connect uh, uh, the word righteousness and obedience. They are using the word uh, obedience as a synonymous to righteousness uh, for for the writer of the gospel of Matthew it is all about uh, righteousness you know seek ye first the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God all right and uh, and, and 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 the righteousness by righteousness here is obedience obedience to God what is it that God wants us to do you see throughout the old gospel of Matthew for instance, when you go uh, uh, in chapter 5, you see the sermon on the mountain and you see Jesus teaching prayers and you see Jesus teaching about the golden rules, how we treat one another. Righteousness is obedience to God, is to do what is right. Righteousness is to love God and to love the neighbor. Righteousness is to treat other people the way we want to be treated. Righteousness is to take care of the least among us. You see, in the Gospel of uh, Matthew, uh, uh, you see in chapter 25, uh, when uh, the final judgment comes, the separation, 
uh, between the goat and the, and, and the sheep, uh, those on the right and those on the left, uh, it is said that uh, it was done based on what you have done to the least of these. Uh, you see Jesus Christ saying, I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me what to drink. I was a stranger, you welcomed me. And then I was in jail, you came and visit me. Based on those actions, uh, uh, a good deed. He said to them, come uh, and enter. You righteous. You righteous. Uh, Jesus is referring to those people who have taken care of the list of these, those who have done good works toward the marginalized and telling them, come and enter the kingdom of God, you righteous. And the other people started saying, oh, we preach in your name. We did miracles in your name. He said to them, I don't know you. I don't know you. So you see the theme of righteousness uh, being used synonymously uh, as obedience. Righteousness, uh, the word comes here in the gospel of Matthew seven times. All right. Is being equated with uh, the equivalence of uh, obedience. Obedience to God. Doing what is right to God. Doing what is right before God. Obedience is, is, is righteousness. And, and, and that's, that, that's the invitation in the Gospel of Matthew was to introduce this notion of uh, righteousness, obedience to God as the two communities were clashing because both communities were expecting the Messiah to come. The Jewish community uh, in Judaism, they were expecting for a Messiah to come. Yet the Messiah came Beyond their expectation, there was, they were expecting someone who would come and deliver them from the Roman occupation. But the one who came, he came as a humble servant. You know, he came as a humble servant. You'll notice that in the Gospel of uh, Mark, as you are reading, uh, Jesus Christ as that uh, uh, simple, uh, uh, simple person, you know, a very, the simplicity of God as uh, 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 God became flesh. As John, uh, the Gospel of John talks about the incarnation of God. Uh, you see that simplicity. So the Jewish people were expecting somebody who was going to come and, and deliver them from the Roman occupation. But yet he came, Jesus came with another uh, agenda. The agenda of God, the kingdom of God was not to kick out the Romans, but yet was to create an opportunity for the kingdom of God. So uh, Matthew is engaging this Jewish community on one hand, letting them that Jesus Christ is the Messiah that we were expecting. And on the other hand, is encouraging these new converts, these new believers, the Christians, the Jewish Christian and the Gentile who now are member of the body of Christ, the church, the new Israel. is giving them words of encouragement to say, yes, you have done the right thing. You have accepted Jesus Christ. He is the Savior of the world. This is the Messiah that was to come. So you see here, my brothers and my sisters, very important important uh, uh, in terms of uh, how uh, Matthew uh, engaged the community and uh, not only is encouraging the community, the new uh, Israel uh, uh, to continue to believe, uh, to continue to be perseverant in terms of uh, uh, the discouragement, the persecution that they were enduring because the other community was trying to persecute them and say to them, you are a heretic, you are kind of another movement, we don't recognize you. So uh, uh, they, they, they were blaming them of uh, uh, being out of control. So, so he's encouraging them. Not only is encouraging them, he's also reminding them about the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, what the new church, what the new Israel should be doing. And, and that's uh, uh, something that you all read yesterday, uh, Matthew chapter 28. Uh, the emphasis in Matthew chapter 28 was uh, the Great Commission, where he's uh, encouraging them that uh, Jesus is saying, I have all power, all authority has been given unto me. So I'm sending you, I'm giving you this mandate. You go. You go and make disciples of all the nations. You teach them to observe my word. Go and talk uh, to people about me. Baptize them according to the teaching that I've given you. You baptize baptize them, baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the gospel of uh, uh, Matthew is really full of uh, the, the teaching of the church because this formula of baptism, for instance, you will only find it in Matthew. 
as you will go through the journey, notice that there are material that are only uh, 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 peculiar for, uh, for, 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 for Matthew. You are not going to see the Great Commission in other gospel. You will see the Great Commission well explained in Matthew where Jesus is giving us this mandate. Go and make disciples of all the nations. The church exists to make disciples for Jesus Christ as we are waiting for the return. Because you will notice uh, 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 the promise. Jesus promised that he's coming back. You know, uh, many of us, we have uh, forgotten, like uh, the disciples, uh, many uh, thought that, okay, how long, how long? Uh, it has been a long time. Jesus promised uh, that he's coming back. How long? Not long. Uh, our concerns, our major concern is to be ready. You, you have to live a life where you are ready. Because the Lord promised that he's going to come back. And, and as we are waiting for the Lord to come back, one of our great, great uh, 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 assignment is to make disciples for Jesus Christ. We are to make disciples by how we live our lives here on earth. Because how we live our life is a testimony to the kingdom of God. We cannot just talk about the kingdom of God if we do not live a life uh, that shows that we are embracing the reality of the kingdom of God. That, that's, that, that's the whole message of repentance. When we turn away, uh, we turn around uh, uh, from, we turn away from our sins and begin to uh, uh, go toward God, we turn toward God, we live this life of repentance, is to embrace the reality of uh, the kingdom of God. Living uh, like uh, uh, people who are kingdom bound. We are in this world, but we do not belong to this world, my brothers and my sisters. We are citizens of the kingdom of God, ambassadors of God here on earth. So we are to live our life in such a way that our life is a living testimony for the kingdom of God. So, because many times when we talk about making disciples for Jesus Christ, we only think about the preacher who needs to stand in the pulpit and preach the gospel. That is just a small part of the process of making disciples. It is our responsibility, all of us in the church, uh, to make disciples for Jesus Christ. How we live the new reality of the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ even said it right, uh, that uh, we are the light of the world, that we are to let our light shine in such a way that people will see our good works, that they will give glory to our God. So the gospel of Matthew, my brothers and my sisters, it is great, uh, a great reference for the church. Uh, you have plenty of uh, Jesus teaching in the gospel of Matthew. Uh, Matthew really collected more about Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 the scholars suggest that uh, Mark was the first gospel to have been written. But in terms of church arrangement, uh, those who combine the material together, uh, uh, tradition, church tradition has put Matthew uh, to be first. So in the New Testament, as you see, Matthew first does not mean Matthew was written first. According to the scholars of the New Testament, uh, Mark was the first to have been written. And then you will see um, Luke and Matthew came and they uh, copy some material from Mark. So in terms of uh, detail, Mark was very short. But in terms of detail, you find more detail in the Gospel of Matthew. So uh, a great book when it comes to the teaching of the church. Remember, the church as the new Israel, composed of the Gentile and the Jewish people. God's favor is upon the church, the body of Christ. God started a plan to rescue the world by choosing a nation, God identified God's words with one nation in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, God expands the covenant with all people. So we are part of the covenant of God, the church, the body of Christ. So uh, Matthew is, a, is really a great book that uh, uh, we have just finished re finishing reading. And uh, as you start the journey into reading the book of Mark, you will see some uh, reference uh, to uh, uh, some material that are going to be similar to the gospel of Matthew. Why? Because Matthew copies some stuff from the book of Mark. Mark was the first to have been written. Mark is short, but Matthew provides uh, a kind of lengthy explanation of the event. All right. So again, I, I appreciate that uh, 
you are encouraged. I appreciate you that uh, you are going to stay on uh, track. Uh, keep on reading. Keep on reading. Uh, be uh, diligent. Uh, create time. Force yourself. There will be days where you feel tired, but encourage yourself. Encourage yourself and do the best. Then until we meet again, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and may the Lord be gracious unto you. Amen.